One thing I love about team-based games is the many diverse roles that can exist within the same game, making it feel like even though the game itself has not changed, you're still able to get a completely different experience based on which character you decide to play. Of course, some roles are always more popular than others, and the more carry-oriented roles are usually the ones that are the most popular, while the more supportive roles are usually less popular by comparison. In some games, this ends up being a much bigger deal than others, but luckily in Valorant, it doesn't seem to be nearly as bad as some other games. A lot of the time, players on your team are going to suck it up and come up with at least a decently balanced team comp. And there's one support that sees a good amount of play for their supportive capabilities and mommy energy. This is Sage in a nutshell. Sage is the definition of a support. She has some of the most basic abilities that you would expect a support character to have. She has a wall to block off choke points, a heal to keep teammates topped up, and a resurrect for her ultimate. Even the names of her abilities are basic, but despite that, Sage is anything but basic. Sage is the mommy we all need. She's the only agent in the entire game where you don't really care how good or bad she does. If she pops off and gets 30 kills, you're shocked for sure, but if she goes 1 in 15, you're somehow still in a good mood even though you just finished getting stomped for 20 minutes. You can't be mad at a Sage because how are you going to be mad at your mom? No matter what happens, Sage is always there to pick you back up. In the darkest of times, Sage is the light at the end of the tunnel who is able to fix you and your team's mental. And just as Sabroza himself once said, the duelists are dead, and they are superior. Sage is the only one that's like wife, wife no, material. Sage's signature ability is her healing ore, bind it to E by default. Sage can heal herself or a teammate for 60 HP, and then it goes on a 45 second cooldown. This ability used to be much stronger a long, long time ago, but that being said, it's still extremely useful. Using it to effectively give a player on your team a second life by topping them off after they get in a duel can be huge. And this ability is a big reason why there are so many e-couples duo queuing with the jet. You can just walk around while your jet does all the work and then heal them up every time they get a kill, allowing them to carry even harder. There are also a lot of solo queue players that pick her, but I don't really know how many of them are actually sage mains. I feel like 99% of them just lock her in when they don't know how to play anything else and all three of their duels picks were already auto-locked. And one thing I learned about Sage's heal is that no matter what you went through or how early you are in the round, she never seems to have this ability online. You may have taken 148 damage and gotten 2 kills in the process as Brim, but the jet accidentally jumped off rafters before the round started and took 12 damage because they forgot to hold the spacebar. So, based on the order of operations you may have added value to your team, but jet has priority since she just cut your chances of winning in half. Sage's next ability is her slow ore binded to Q by default. This is an orb that Sage can throw that slows. Yep, this one's pretty self-explanatory too. Although the ability's simple, it's still very strong. It blows my mind how many players I see just not using her orbs for some reason. It's pretty much impossible to push through unless you're playing Jet or Raze, and makes it extremely hard to trade teammates that decide to go ice skating. Jet and Raze are the only agents that can realistically push through the slow, and most of the time Jets and Raze's are baiting in the back so you don't have to worry about them pushing anyways. So more often than not, Sage's slow just stalls the enemy's push for the entire 7 second duration, giving your team time to rotate. It's also pretty hard to miss a shot on someone that can't really move, so it's also really easy to swing off it and get a kill on an enemy that's stuck in the slow. Overall, this ability is very solid and not one that should be overlooked. Speaking of solid abilities, Sage's last ability is her barrier orb binded to C by default. This ability allows Sage to create an ice wall. Again, this is a very basic ability with a lot of potential. Of course you can use it to block off choke points, but there are many other creative ways it can be used. It effectively creates a solid platform that you can stand on to give you a spot on high ground so you can wall yourself up somewhere to catch enemies off guard. There are also many spots across all the maps where you can use it to head glitch to make yourself really hard to hit. There are also wall one ways which are just unfair to say the least. And there are a select few individuals out there who can use the wall aggressively to make some really nuts plays. Unfortunately, there are a few too many people out there who think they are a lot better at the game than they actually are. I've seen way too many average to below average sages attempt some crazy wall they saw on a TikTok one time that ended up getting them killed and costing us the round. Almost like they're trying to show off their grim cosplay except without the aim or the good looks. Please consider practicing those walls in a custom game first and preferably you'll keep them there. Sage's ultimate is resurrection and for 8 ultimate points it resurrects. Again, this ability is pretty self-explanatory. You take a fight. You die, she brings you back to life. There's quite a bit of delay on the res however, so it's not always as easy to use as you think. Your teammate needs to be in a really safe position to be able to res them and most of the time your teammates are taking fights where they shouldn't be. Meaning you have to be a little more creative than just pressing two buttons. 
So in those cases, you're instead just going to be baiting the body to get a trade on them immediately after. Or in the case where you hate your teammates, you can also just res them in the open to give them another death and tilt them super hard, which is how I tend to use it. When not used to troll, this is a very strong ultimate for its ability to swing around super heavily in your team's favor. I will say though that if you're in one of those games where you have baiting duelists, you'll probably never get to use it since you're going to be going in and dying first a lot of the time, so good luck I guess. Sage is a very solid agent. It seems like no matter which map you're playing or what the meta is looking like, Sage is always a viable pick. She has a very solid kit that's very versatile and is one of the better picks among these supports, while also being easy enough to pick up that she can be played at pretty much every rank. And no matter what your team comp looks like, you can never be disappointed with having a Mommy Sage. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. If you have any suggestions for agents you want to see me talk about in this series, please leave a comment letting me know. Don't forget that if you want to catch me live, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jittersval if you want to check me out. Also, follow me on Twitter if you'd like, I post on there pretty often. And if you want to join my Discord community, there'll also be a link in the description for that as well. And finally, don't forget to subscribe for more Valorant-related content.